Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sabrina and today we're continuing on with Beacon Pines. Let's go to the drugstore. Oh, should I have talked with her? Too late. Sorry, sister. Got caught up with work. Work? You? I have a few more details to lock down before the festival. Oh, do you have the to report? Is this is this town festival really about? <clears throat> I think around nervously. that Mr. Kerr really does just want something good for this town. He's actually a pretty nice guy when you spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Your job has helped me figure out what Kerr and perennial harvest truly intentions are with this town we have a responsibility this is our father's town was excuse me this was our father's town he's gone heiress and he isn't coming back father left us with nothing but problems mr kirk came came here and offered us help we accepted that help we didn't agree uh we didn't agree to them turning father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground that's a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from the, your damn backyard. They're dumping their nasty little secrets on us, and it's all inevitably goes wrong. Who do you think will be to blame? Hung in the air. We have new choice to new a uh, new choice to make now, sister. The town is going to change whether we like it or not. We're going to choose to be part of that future or forgotten in the past. It's a shame. Father named you Augustus, but. You will always just be Gus. Good night, Eris. Aren't her um actually her name's Aaron yeah, Ernest. Uh I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice I'm looking for long crease still there afraid not can candy form you might say we have Solomon an arrangement a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth sometimes it's a small pleasures in life though we might not always be family to rely on licorice never lets me down you can't say licorice would I can't say licorice would be my first choice but whatever floats your boat. I can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confections. Oh, I like sour gobs, sir. I'm certain you do. I always wonder why Nun Creed kept licorice in stock. You must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn loyalty. For, for some, it's as easy as a cold hard cash. See. Have you ever seen actually use this thing? Besides Nuncreed? No. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. That's not a normal phone booth. It's got like a blinky keypad. Why is there a blinking mm -hmm. keypad? I mean underground secrets the password Beck flung open the door and they all squeezed in Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad <laughs> the inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell that's hilarious without even the space to panic they closed their eyes held their breath and accepted their fate suddenly the chaotic descent slowed to an effortless landing it was unclear where they ended up but at least it was solid ground the air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine 
I knew there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth. Of course I did. <laughs> Didn't I say that? No. I definitely thought it. The transdimensional conduct. Uh, yes. At one point or another. You've seen... You said that about... Sorry. You said about that about every technology ever discussed. That's why I'm a good predict... Mining Operation Alpha. Not that I know of. The town is full of farms and fertilizer. When I say trust the mine, a miner up to the point when they hit gold. Upon realizing the means. Main office. Sign stuff. She's involved in all this. We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Warehouse. Yes. That's the one that you broke. That's not just saying. That's a lot of buttons. Aside from Earthlings, okay. Dolo's hands hovered over the field of blinking buttons. Shit, shit. Awesome. told them this was an absurd password. You'll be able to save your skin. Hold on, like, m I like my skin. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. Who? Walt. He gestured toward the strange tubes. All of this. It's true, I used to bounce you on my knee. Seemed that always happens. Reality complications, life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright pharmacist. Both hell bent of helping folks. No, we were partners. He helped patients and I helped him. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh. I need some I need someone to know this. One day Sharp Valentine comes to us. Says he got an opportunity. He found something he couldn't quite understand. He's willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. Your father and I both believed in helping people. But the thing I could never get him to understand was it's a lot easier to help people if you yourself, if you help yourself now and, and then. Classic sidekick into villain plotline. <laughs> True. Walt loved the righteous. I uh, love being righteous almost more than he loved his family. He was wrong about what I think. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day that he's dead or and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharper's long gone, but he still has me saying yes. Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs Nancrete doing. Nancrete took a menacing step towards the children. I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of it. But you forced my hand. To laugh. You really don't know. My gran isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Seems like she's planning to crash the town party. She's going to disrupt the festival. The How would she do that? From Nancrete's face. How does she know? Apparently, she knows a lot of things. Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we've busted into today. And honestly, hers is way cooler. She's got maps, explosives, and bad intentions, big man. Creed grabbed Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. I 
I don't know. She had a map marked with a fountain in the square. A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncreed. She knows about the source. What the heck is the source? If she tries to source the destroy the source, it could catalyze, and dear god, she's gonna freeze us all. You all need to run. Away. Far away from this town as you can. Head west and don't look back. We're gonna follow him. We're following him, right? Totally. You good? Yep. I love this town. Chapter 8 The Cold Hard Truth. We're going to go back to the Beth old leapt town. Up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carom her gracefully along. She heard the tinny distant echoes of Rollo's <laughs> glee. Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Then, all of a sudden, as if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed into view. A burst of wintry air snapped across her face as she was flung out into the cold. Intense, yeah. I think I might have parted with some fluids in there. Does, didn't feel like we traveled that far. Okay. Can we go to my dad's? I can't access it. This is starting to feel real familiar. May not be uh, well versed with the Beacon Pines, but this does look like some s sort of frozen replica of the town. I got it. It's obvious now. Nunkri is an alien. <laughs> Rollo! Stick with me. He's a species only live in sub zero temperatures. Boy, here we go. The source is their base, their base camp dimension. Found traveling through. No! Kills us, shape shifts in the beacon pines, the sins of their choosing. You never really had me. But you very much lost me there. I'll just keep going. As they rounded the corner to the frozen town square, they spotted Mr. Nungreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the. Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nungreed was after. Graham stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Yeah, no, don't do that, Graham. We've seen this. Turned back toward the kids, desperation in his eyes. Listen to Grandma Luca. Between me and Juniper. Held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncreed spun back toward Gran, his voice growing louder. You got all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over the torch if you don't understand what you're doing. Okay. Walt told me everything. He trusted you and you betrayed the trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life was a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might Mr. still be alive. Mr. winced with anguish. His voice hardened. That's they both not true. Yelled, not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. 
Love is like a brother to me. I just have different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to line your pockets. Now that's they not fair. At each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. Okay. Amid a blur of emotions and memories, Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed. As if we're gonna have to use stage. either it's gonna be the end or we're gonna have to use a word. And in the stillness, he began to hum. Hum. And in the stillness, he began to hum. Which comes worse, I'll use weep next. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud. I feel like we've gotten to the point where, like, endings will come fairly quickly. Oh, very cute. Very... Oh, I like that. slowly set in those countless nights of consolation the incomparable loss they shared together she let the torch fall to the snow and sizzle out we saved the town a few steps toward luca was all she could bear before dropping to the snow herself through a flood of tears she began to hum along note for note Oh, that's why she's dead. This is her mom. To make out the impression of a familiar face. She peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Only smaller, older, changed. Luca sprinted as fast as he could toward his mother. They held each other close. And the cold retreated from their bodies. Aww. Why is his mom old? Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. He was always right there, Luca. Do to keep you safe. I thought of getting answers would help both of us move on. And the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped, it'd bear if everyone thought I was gone. These bad people, Luca, they won't stop until they get what they want. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. Joseph to stop them. slumped into the cold, wet snow. They can't be stopped. This is too big. I've tried beating them at their own game, but then I, I'm done fighting For fire the first with fire. Time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. No more lies. I see a better way of stopping perennial harvest. A cold, hard truth. on Crete with pity. He looked. Joseph stared into the snow as if searching it for answers. Come on, everyone. We've got party to crash. That he always wins. Chapter 9 The Devil You Know Seven Months Ago. 
Eleanor Van Horn crept mm -hmm. down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen key card worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. Oh, are we going to be playing as Eleanor? In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempest Liquamen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. town has a, a dangerous secret only exists to keep hidden. They picked the whole damn town, moved it right up under our noses. Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Absurd, just plain impossible. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us that they would clean this place up. They just leave town for, we just have to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated, you're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. A little help, please. Do you all see this festival as a sham? The excuse to have the whole town gathered in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She's absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I'm Eleanor Van Horn. through the crowd. You aren't... Aren't you a sneaky little dickens? Well... We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true, and now the whole town is paying the price. Associates take disturbed woman. No, she's not the one who's disturbed. You two-timing clown. You all know there's something very wrong with this town. It's just easier to look the other way. The truth is... It's quite enough, Mr. Nuncrete. Dragged on Joseph Nuncrete's face. Yes, sir. No, I want them to see this. No, the uh, the ever Tempest Eleanor is quite quite a thorn in my side. Weed borrow and don't belong. I must confess, you he look dreadful. Plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself a rare company that you've managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to strip my little party, but alas, I never expected you to be uh, something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter, your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr, yes, sir. The sham. Let's put the sham cut short and thank you for the rosary rosary. I'll take it from here. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. You are the old Valentine. Before Kerr gave a bow of deference. Founder, you are much gracious. through the crowd. Thankfully, we can dispense with formalities. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. Yeah, you can all call me a Sharper His Valentine. Body and face began to contour. A hushed horror gripped the crowd. This is a story about change. Yes. So you didn't see this coming. Sharp Good. Examined his new hands. Quite improvement. Everything goes much. Looked so much smaller now. Eleanor, I was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I want you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. 
Why does everybody look so downtrodden? It's a celebration, people. Maybe it would help it set the moon. Mr. Pratt, you may dare reveal the sign. Ha, wonderful. A crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Malice. I ain't gonna let you get away with it again. This is Mr. Kerr. Gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. You coward. A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. Thought so. We were hoping you died. statement yes as you fail the ministry constantly thankfully you're counting this time okay I was focused on cementing our legacy uh, what's that about yeah 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 would have been possible without I think you've said enough nonsense people deserve to know how helpful oil you've been I only did what I did because you left me no choice it's always a choice Joseph you simply uh, too weak to take it no matter cheer up about to be as rich as beyond your wildest dreams you should follow Mr. Kerr's example when I found him he was a sorrier state of any of you aging actor desperate to recapture his youth he played his part and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again forever in fact if he remains loyal goes for all of you uh -huh. i think william kerr has never been in charge So it poses time Sharper for a big exclusive. The crowd with indignant pride. This like cutscene's not He'd going anywhere. This moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. Mm-hmm. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Thank you for the opportunity. What's going to stop the town from rising up? Yeah. Fear. I'm not afraid of you. Haha, <laughs> young hero. A keen eye on you, boy. You and your friends may have a disrupting my plans. It's a pity that a bit differently. You might have had the chance of a moment of triumph. And that's the fate for you. You can't do this, oh, but I can. I have won. Uh huh. Sharper coughed up one this final the end and cracked his knuckles. I think this is the end of the storyline. And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily, as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The end. Ah, uh, great. This is wrong. Yes, it is wrong. Things are becoming clearer now. You can feel it, right? Yes. We can't let Sharper win. No, we can't. He might just be the key to this whole thing. I Let's agree. See. So we have Weep here. Oh, we have the. We also have this one here. Oh. <gasps> 
I want basically I want to see what Weep does, and then I feel like this is going to be the um, this is going to be the next one. But I do want to thank you all so much for watching. If you're not already, feel free to subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.